So going back to Cuba, backtracking a little, Clara Porset had sought out Albers as a teacher at Black Mountain College, barely six months after his arrival, and invited him to Havana. It was there at the end of 1934 that Albers got his first taste of the Latin subcontinent. Cuba's warmth and sunshine, the abundant tropical fruits and flowers, offered pungent sensations. Cuba was a glorious interlude in our life at Black Mountain, he wrote to Kandinsky. We were able to forget the winter completely, under the sun, in the warmth, among palms, flowers, bananas, sugarcane, pineapples. On New Year's Eve, we lay on a warm beach, five hours drive from Havana, under a black starry sky and drank Spanish wine. Everything is totally different from America, the people, the city, the language. Utterly different food, very strong coffee, black cigarettes, rum. And I think you can imagine how, from the isolation of North Carolina, how utterly different Havana uh, was. And there, th this is Annie Albers on this trip. They went with their friends, Ted and Bobby Dreyer from Black Mountain College. And that's the Dreyers there. And then there's Annie and Ted and Annie and Clara Porset in Havana in 1934. Um, all the photographs, by the way, that I'll be showing are Albers' own photographs, whether they're sort of this kind of snapshot or uh, more sort of considered studies. As Clara Porset recognized when she wrote that his works were more like sculptures, Albers was concerned with a formal investigation of the age-old obsession of painting, the depiction of three-dimensional space on a flat surface. Two works from the period illustrate this. The painting Meeting B is quite unpainterly. Its sober and limited colors are applied smoothly with strict boundary lines. The linoleum cut print showcase, on the other hand, made in the same year, depends on three superimposed incised linear shapes that form a white on black spatial puzzle. And you can see the connection between the two works, obviously. In meeting B, that's the painting, space is materialized as apparently overlapping layers of paint. What is at stake in both works is the artifice of painting itself. Showcase's title alludes to the conventions of artificial perspective, the silent compact between painter and viewer that the picture, that the picture surface is an apparent transparent plane that functions as a window onto reality. Meeting B proposes an illusion of space established purely and directly through its material. What is actually taking place here is not overlaying of materials, but an arrangement of discrete flat color areas. By choosing his colors with care, Albers creates a convincing illusion of space. Meeting B is a bold painting, especially given the fact that Albers had only recently begun to paint after his years at the Bauhaus. It is also analytical and constructed. Um, and it reminded me so much uh, of that Charles Shaw painting upstairs, the shaped canvas, because it just seems so much of the same period, which is from 35. Um, one year later, the Alberses, encouraged by Annie, whose Bauhaus textiles owed a debt to the ancient Andean textiles known to her from Berlin's ethnographic collections, headed south to Mexico for the first time. There, Joseph experienced an epiphany. Mexico is truly the promised land of abstract art, for here it is already thousands of years old, he wrote to Kandinsky. And it was a truly a revelation. He just felt such a kindred uh, feeling for the country and um, especially for the uh, archeology, span the ancient sites. Uh, so that was December 35, and then six months later, they were back again for the entire summer of 36, and Albers began painting furiously. And, sorry, visiting and photographing ancient Aztec and Zapotec sites in Mexico City and Oaxaca, 
the Yucatan and the Mayan ruins would come rather later, uh, where extensive archaeological work was daily uncovering new secrets, Albers recognized the spatial complexity that he was attempting. Today, Monte Alban again, he wrote to his close friend Bobby Dreyer in July 1936, a big day. I got cold shivers as if I were short of breath, and once again I gained extraordinary respect for the spaces between the pyramids and the ball court. It was marvelous once again. Monte Alban is one of the greatest experiences of my life. Albers's response to this overwhelming assembly of structures, and just to show you, these are photographs that were you sort of details. Well, these are larger photographs of the, color, of the contact prints in the previous thing. This actually is not Monte Alban, but <laughs> it's Kalahikstula, um, but is very important for Albers. But this is the Boer Court, and this is the camp. Albers was there in 35, and this was the camp of Alberto Caso, the Mexican uh, archaeologist, who was, it was actually in the process of excavation. And here we see how his photographs, how he sharply sort of highlighted the geometry of those spaces. You can see what, what his vision, what he was looking at. And of course, in those days, you could just drive your car right up to the, <laughs> the sites. If anyone's been there since, it's rather more police these days. Um, So Alves's response to this overwhelming assembly of structures, as he expressed it, combined, as we can see, a deeply felt bodily sensation. He said, I was short of breath. I couldn't breathe. I was breathless when I saw the space. Um, combined with an intellectual appreciation. Two paintings of the period Temple and Archaeologic, both unfortunately now lost and known only from black and white photographs, read as direct responses to the Mexican archaeological sites. Like the ground plans of temples, and this is actually from a 1901 uh, Harvard expedition, uh, a, man, uh, a copy of the report of which was in Albers' personal library, um, like the ground plans of temples, uh, these paintings resemble, sorry, like the ground plans, plans of the temples which these paintings resemble, these works are diagrammatic. They convey two-dimensional space but do not express the complete breadth and depth of the visual experience. So Albers began to look for other means. Around the same time, he began a series of small, quite austere and elegant line drawings in pen and black ink. The forms they describe are of an invented geometry, silent, unsolvable visual puzzles. They occupy a space between knowledge and uncertainty. Next, he floated the line drawings over broadly painted grounds, putting into play that extraordinary respect for the spaces between the pyramids and the ball court that he had expressed at uh, Monte Alban. The results were works like Pyramid and Mexican and um, the untitled work uh, below, where prosaic site plans are transformed into plans for mystifying and imagined spaces. <clears throat> 